we're off. Matthew's up in front of me kicking up dust. I'm lagging behind because, well, I just don't want to eat all that dust. And Jace jumped in with Scott. They're on their way to Reno. And Matthew and I are hopefully going to find him a buck in the next day and a half. This is, for me, a bonus day and a half. I didn't know Matthew had the time to go do this. And uh, I'll always make time. So we'll see how it goes. Good luck. We need it. Please, any luck you have, send our way. We're out here. Scott and Jace just left. We decided we're going to try to get one on our own. And we're, I don't know, half a mile off the main road. And there's a group of them right here. Um, not much of anything. So we're going to keep moving on and go down the ways, try to find one, and then try another spot, try to find some. And then we'll probably run into town and try again this evening. So that's the plan for today. Um, got really, really smoky overnight. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, hopefully there's not anything too close that we don't know about, but we should be okay. What we're doing is driving from water hole to water hole, getting on the knobs kind of up above those water holes and just glassing. And we have a whole series of those on our maps. And that's the strategy for the day. We're in two vehicles right now because we're looking to drop one of them at a camp place. But for right now, we're just covering lots of ground in hopes that we see something that gives us an opportunity that Matthew wants to take advantage of. So. Matthew, this is your go-to spot. You say there's Howie's antelope here. I mean, I wouldn't call it the go-to spot, but every time I've driven by here, any time of day, there's always been antelope, and there still are. So there's a few bucks running around. We're just going to figure out which one we can actually get to. So we're going to grab the spotter and make a plan. I'd probably shoot that one today if we could get close to it. I mean, if. You mean when we get close to it. There's uh, definitely some ready behavior happening out here right now. But the, the one that I'm looking at in this group is about 600 yards away, and he's running all over the place. So we're going to see what he does. Maybe he'll just come closer and we can get a shot or, you know, only have to make a short stock on him to get a, a decent shot. So fortunately, the wind is pretty low right now. So... That'll help my cause a little bit, but he's just running these does all over the place. They don't seem to care too much that we're here. 90% of the time that I've been here, there's actually been a camper right here on the flat. They're at 560 yards. So I'm just gonna grab my gun and my tripod, walk straight towards them and see if they let me get close. And that's the plan, yet again. Um, I'm gonna stay here. Yeah. So I'm, I'm from afar. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna bring the, the gun and tripod. I'm not gonna bring my whole pack and everything. Yeah. It's close enough where if I need to come back and grab the pack, I'll just do that. So that's the plan. It looks like that could be him. <laughs> Hard to tell what this big horns on him. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Matthew's using the old trick of walking straight towards a pronghorn because a lot of times pronghorn there 
peripheral vision is what they rely on and their depth perception isn't always that good. Especially if you have something behind you like a dirt berm or a vehicle or whatever. So I'm going to try to keep this focused on the buck while Matthew walks out there. He'll be blurry and out of focus. Well, he, he's already cut 120 some yards off. And the buck was at 560, but the does are looking at him. They're trying to make out what he is. Matthew's cut 270 yards off, and the buck right now is almost 600 and walking away. Matthew said if he could get to that little row of brush, he thinks he might have it. But they're walking away from him, so I don't know how this is going to work. That doe's getting nervous. Matthew's got 305 yards off it. And the pronghorn are at six something. I can't go any wider. Matthew sat down in that depression right here. And he's gonna range it. I think he's yeah he's ranging it and, uh, the buck is at 622 and Matthew is at three oh eight so right now he's at about. 300 and some yards, he's getting the rifle set up. So I'm gonna switch over to the buck here. Heat waves are so bad though, it's just really hard to see much. From my angle, Matthew's off to my left, so his shot angle is going to be a lot different than what my filming angle is. I wish I was to the left further. I'd the buck has cleared everything now. I think he's hoping for just a little bit closer shot. That's Matthew. This way, this way, this way. That'll get closer. Cause it would give. Oh, sounded like a shot. But I'm not sure. I think that was a shot that worked. Just like that. Mr. Patience is rewarded once again. <laughs> oh, how cool is that? <laughs> oh man. That was a perfect shot. You made that look really easy. What's that? You made that look really easy. Well, he just stood there for a while. I thought I was going to hear you screaming and celebrating back here. I thought I shot the wrong one or something. No, I would have, but with all the <laughs> audio and wind, I'm like, well, I don't want to give the editor nothing to work with because the heat waves are so bad. I'm doing the play-by-play. -play. All I can say is I think that was a shot because I saw him just take off running. Yeah. 
but how close did it get i was at about 300. okay so because i ranged them at 609 and i ranged you at like 310 and then they walked a little bit but yeah. you were off left of camera yeah if if they would have walked 10 steps more left i would have had both of you in camera <laughs> at the time of the shot yeah what do you feel good happy we have some meat he's not a monster but i'm happy we we made it work made a good one shot kill and Got some antelope steaks for dinner. Hope I didn't cause too much meat damage. That's what I'm after, I wanna eat this guy. I don't think you did. Okay. You couldn't hit him any better in the heart lung area. I mean, if you walk up to place a bullet, that's where you would put it. How far was it, Matthew? Give him the details. Uh, it was about 300 or 325 yards. I just walked straight at him and they didn't seem to be too concerned with me. So I stopped at about 300 where I had a little bit of cover that I could sit down and look at him. Picked out this guy from the group and then waited for everything to get clear. There were so many does around, he was, seemed like he was always standing in front of one. And I just really wanted to make sure I had a, a good solid shot and a good solid rest. I've been saying this whole time that I've really enjoyed this hunt, just being out here with everyone. And it's not about the trophy. I think every animal is a trophy, but to me, the quickest way to ruin a fun, good hunt is to make a really bad shot on an animal and wound it or lose it or have to chase it for forever and have the animal suffer. So very happy that this one worked out. Um, got some, some antelope steaks for tonight, made a good shot, got close. You know, that's all you can really ask for. Wish Scott and Jace were here, but that's how it goes. So we're gonna get working on this guy. I've already tagged him on the app. I'm gonna attach my tag to his, his carcass here. We're gonna get him cooled off so that he doesn't spoil by the time we get into town and get ice. So. <laughs>